This is the Peugeot 208 petrol and this is the E208, its electric counterpart. That has a full battery and that has a full tank. And today we're going to be driving them the same route, under the exact same conditions. And then we're going to compare the running costs of the journey. So we're off. This is the northernmost part of the island. We're in Meliha, and the plan is to drive all the way to the south, around a 30 kilometer journey, at which point we will turn around and come back to this direction. We've located a fuel station and a charger, which are literally meters apart, so we'll be able to drive back to the exact same point, and then we'll compare. In an ideal world, you have a clone of myself driving that second petrol car. Now we couldn't get that, but we do have the next best thing. My dad has kindly volunteered and has drawn the short straw today, and he is driving the petrol car right behind us at the moment. And uh, before we left, we actually wanted to make this test as accurate as possible. So we both got on the weighing scale, and it turns out I'm carrying an extra five kilos of, of muscle. So uh, we're compensating for that with the help of uh, the weight we're adding to his car. We're also running the cars in the exact same way in the sense that we've got the air conditioning on the same temperature. We've reset the trip meter on both cars so we can check that we get the same distance. We're also gonna get live statistics on the consumption, in this case, how many kilowatts per 100 kilometers and in the fuel case how many liters per 100 kilometers and we'll be able to compare of course both cars you can get the stats online but when you're out here in the real world using the air conditioning in traffic uphills obviously everything's going to vary so we've made it to the next town which is shamshia i have 11 kilometers on the trip meter and I've just been told the petrol car is doing 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers, which is actually nearly double what it is rated off the spec book, which is something like four. Obviously, we're not getting the best efficiency here. While the electric is doing 10.5 kilowatts per 100 kilometers. I'm not going to convert that on the top of my head, but we'll, we'll be able to get the liter equivalent for, for the kilowatts for the electric here. Obviously, the electric car is a lot more efficient in its build. So all that energy in the battery, the car is using nearly 90% of it to power the wheels, which is what you want. The petrol car, the best case scenario for the fuel in that tank when, when it's burnt, only 25% at a best case of that energy is gonna to get to the wheels, which is what you want to move yourself along. So right off the bat, in terms of efficiency of the two vehicle types, you have a huge difference. For our international viewers, Malta is a very small country. It's more or less the size of your typical city, if not smaller. We don't have any freeway, so we're not going to be using the engine or the electric motor. Um, at high power, so it's a very slow driving speed for the most part. And so we're going down this uh, downhill here. I wonder how the region's coming along in the petrol car, because I am charging my battery as we speak. So we're, we are regaining energy, something you definitely cannot do in the petrol car. So we're nearly at our change over point. I have 35 kilometers on the trip meter. Average speed is just 31 kilometers per hour, which is the same in the petrol car. My efficiency is 11.9 kilowatts per 100 kilometers. 
And Pa, what is your uh, what's your liters per hundred? Six point two. Six point two. So it has improved along the journey. All right, we'll see how we are doing at the turnover point. We've made it to Birzabuja, which is a southernmost part of the island. And there's this little sort of car park here where we're going to turn around and go back where we came from, essentially, Meliha to the north. The journey has been 39 kilometers, so maybe we'll hit 40 by the time we turn around. So it's going to be an 80 kilometer round trip. Here's that car park. I don't think you enter from there. Maybe you enter from here. Okay, we're in. I'm gonna park right here. So we've made it to Birzabuja, the southernmost point of the island. It's been a 40 kilometer trip. And now we're gonna double back and essentially drive all the way back to the north and check what the consumption has been. My dad is now leading in front. So just to make sure we had no air resistance advantage because I was in front before on the return trip, he will be driving in front to make sure we have equal time in front of each other. A few more interesting things about the cars because although they look very similar from the outside, they're of course very different from the inside. For starters, obviously I'm carrying a very heavy battery. The dry weight of the petrol car without the driver and without fuel is just over one ton while the dry weight of this car with the battery is 1.5 ton so there's a 500 kilo difference in the weight of the two vehicles. Another thing the petrol version actually comes in three different engine specs and uh, we actually have the lowest version there, the 1.2 liter three-cylinder engine. And that achieves 75 horsepower, which is very slow and very and less powerful compared to this electric car, which has a 136 horsepower um, equivalent motor. So I am trying to keep my foot off the throttle to try keep this as even as possible. I mean, just in terms of acceleration, this car can literally accelerate to 60 in half the time um, it would take the petrol car. So you could say the petrol car in this test has an advantage in terms of efficiency, because obviously smaller engine, less fuel burn. So if you want to learn more about this Peugeot E208, I have covered it in a separate review, which I'm linking above. I'm also going to link another video about what's it like to drive an electric car because I'm sure by the end of this video you will be convinced to make the switch because the difference in cost for the same exact journey is going to be quite drastic. At least that's what we believe it will be. We're going to wait till the conclusion to officially say that. But just on paper, the electric car should be far more efficient. But we're going to find out here in the real world on the exact same day, same driving conditions, one after the other, who or which car is more efficient. So stick around till the end of the video, just a few kilometers left, and we will have the verdict. So for those who are wondering, the temperature is 31 degrees Celsius, a nice hot October day here in Malta. So it's, it's actually quite a good temperature also for the electric car. So we're in that ideal battery temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So the car is probably not having to cool the battery um, possibly at all. So thus it uses less energy which is great in a climate like Malta because we're very rarely far away from this 25 degrees Celsius. It's going to help with the efficiency of, of the vehicle in this case. So for this test, we're actually going to be charging on the public charging network. 
which is operated through the Charge My Ride app. One thing to note about that is that the price today on a Sunday is 17 cents per kilowatt hour. You actually get a better and cheaper rate if you charge at home. So if you're on the Enemolta EV tariff scheme, you can actually charge at just under 13 cents per kilowatt, which is obviously cheaper. Um, so even when we share today's result, know that you can even get an even cheaper cost on the EV if you're charging at home. just finished charging the electric car and the, the total electricity consumed in this journey was 11.43 kilowatts which at the 17 cents rate we are paying at this public charger means that this journey took one or costs rather one euro and 93 cents which is in direct comparison to the petrol car which again did the same journey same exact conditions which cost six euros and 83 cents so nearly one fourth the cost for the journey in the electric car so i hope you found today's video interesting as always remember to subscribe and i hope i've convinced you that the future is electric